We bought this abandoned sailboat earlier this year in California. She looked pretty bad, but now, after a grueling refit, we were finally ready to splash her and embark on our journey north towards Alaska and the Northwest Passage. It's always exciting to see your boat splash, especially for the first time, but we are in a hurry as the winter is coming and our US visas are running out. We need to head out into the Pacific and set sail towards north without any kind of a sea trial. Our trip begins in the Napa River and our target is the protected waters of Strait of Juan de Fuca, a total distance of around 7 to 800 nautical miles, covering almost the whole US West Coast in some notoriously bad waters. We had called this boatyard our home for the last five months, but now with our sailboat Lumi in water, we threw a quick farewell party before heading towards the Golden Gate Bridge and the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> no, 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 the Finnish vodka is empty. It's definitely empty. <laughs> That's it, we are on the way on the Napa River after a four and a half month refit. It was pretty relentless, especially the past two months, you know, we've just been working non-stop. I haven't really had time to do videos or anything, shoot footage. It's been really crazy, but we got a lot of shit done. We are in a hurry because of personal reasons. We need to fly back to Finland in a couple of weeks. And before that, we'd like to take the boat as far north as possible. Um, so tomorrow morning we might actually just uh, head out and sail under the Golden Gate Bridge and turn right towards north and Alaska. That's the plan for now if everything goes well. Today we still have to do around 25-30 uh, miles to get to an anchorage close to the gate and test the boat a little bit, see if she actually floats. Kiitos ruoasta, Kokki Haapanen. Tää on niin vähän maukkaampaa kuin meidän viimeisen viiden kuukauden nuudelikeitot. Raamen nuudeli. Ah, napa bowl. Mixed everything. <laughs> Sorro, jännittääkö sillä alitus? No, ei voi. Ihan on kavalta ja paha. Okei, okay, avaakohan se paha silloin meille? Okei, okay, okei. Okay. The two new faces on this video are our friends Kuti and Viri. We had somehow managed to lure them to join us on this trip. I don't know why they thought it would be a good idea to head out into the Pacific with a completely untested boat, but now we were in this together. I gave Kuti the honors to steer us under the first bridge. It felt great to be leaving the river behind, heading towards our first anchorage and blue water.
we set anchor in Paradise Cove in San Francisco Bay, and then we spent a long night doing final preparations. Sohvi and Kulti changed the gear and the engine oil one more time, and I installed a VHF and some other smaller things. Next morning the weather forecast for heading north looked very favorable, so we made the decision to go for it. Sailing up the west coast of the US can be extremely tough, and we had heard a lot of horror stories. It is a completely unprotected lee shore, the wind is normally against you, and there are only a few safe harbors. We had never had the chance to actually sail this boat, and had only hoisted the sails at the dock. All the systems on board were new or still under construction, and had not had a good sea trial. But the forecast was just too good, and deep down I knew we would be okay as long as we took it easy. We had heard a seafarer's tale which said that when you pass under the Golden Gate Bridge, you are supposed to throw a coin into the sea for good luck and to guarantee a safe return. Going out into the Pacific like this, we definitely were feeling a bit anxious and in need of some good luck, so we did toss the coins in. I don't know if the coins played any part or not, but soon after heading out of the gate, the winds died down completely, and we got to experience something really amazing and funny. We are new to the area, so I'm actually not sure if these are seals or sea lions, but this same scene would repeat itself a few times. First we'd spot a few seals jumping, and then suddenly the sea appeared to be boiling and there were a few hundred of them. They were obviously feeding on something, and joining the party were also a few whales, which you can also notice in these clips if you take a really close look.
after a few days of this mix of sailing and motor sailing, we had to check our diesel level. We hadn't had the time to fix the fuel gauge, and not only that, we were actually not sure of the precise capacity of our diesel tank. So it was back to the trusty traditional method, the wooden stick. Hon disukkaa vielä vaikka kuinka paljon kuulkaa. Mä missä niinku tiedät, että mikä kuinka leveä vaikka on. No ei me oikein tiedäkään, mutta... <laughs> Keppi on ihan hyvin. Tossa oli niinku... So that was the full tank and now we still have like... Over half of the stick, but of course the tank it's not as big ah, okay, at the yeah. bottom. Yeah, so maybe we have more process still. We have like... At least one third left, probably more. Yeah. And the day tank is full as well. Okay. Was tänne silloin merkata tai taso? Ei kun tankas täältä. Niin, ennen kuin tapa tankattiin. Totta. Niin sit tietäis, että paljon sitä on kulunut. Niin, voitais laskea kulutus. Joo. We determined that we had enough fuel left to go on for a few more days and with the forecast still favorable, we decided to push on. And the next evening, we were glad that we did. So glad to be out of the boatyard and finally sailing and uh, can't really believe the weather right now. We were motoring for a full day but now we caught some wind and we are just coasting along doing maybe four and a half to five knots in very little wind so I'm pretty happy with the sailing performance of, um, of this boat so far because there's really not that much wind and none of our reef is really optimized there's still a lot to do so i think i can still squeeze you know 0.2 knots more out in these conditions or maybe even half a knot i was unable to resolve the problem with the engine shaft seal so that one is still leaking uh, only just a little bit when we are um, when the shaft is spinning but Still, it's supposed to be a triplet seal. I don't really know what's going on there, but that's fine. It doesn't seem to be getting worse. We will try to do a couple hundred more before the bad weather kicks in in two days. Crew is looking pretty happy as well. Let's play! Ja, Let's niin. play this What okay. game! <laughs> Four days and many card games later, the boat had developed some problems and a storm was coming in. So it was time for tough decisions. Last day of sailing. We have been really lucky with the weather in regards to making some mileage. 
and we've done 500 nautical miles approximately and today we are going through the entrance to the Columbia River which is one of the most treacherous bar entrances um, on the west coast of USA apparently I read that around 2,000 boats have shipwrecked over there Nowadays though we have good weather forecasts and good fire reports and uh, currently the weather is just really good we hardly have any swell so we shouldn't have any problems um, but we are still well we are motoring right now as well because we need to make the flood tide enter or to go across the bar and, and enter the river so we need to be there at a certain time so if we want to make it today then um, we are kind of in a, in a bit of a hurry <laughs> yeah we are really excited <laughs> if we're gonna die or not <laughs> 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 okay, so <I'm> <laughs> We do, however, of course, have some problems with the boat, which is kind of expected, but there's a couple that are really annoying, and I'll show you. By the way, see that we are not really in ship shape at all right now because it's just so calm that um, we can just uh, put all of our stuff all around the place and it's not flying around, but that's why it's a bit of a mess here. Aha, Viri on kitalla. Opiskelemassa. So the problem is here, <clears throat> we need to dismantle this here, Oop. and like I told you it's a mess here, we still have a lot to do, well this is a mess, but we've made, we've done 500 nautical miles. But the pro here is the problem, this is the centerboard box and that's the centerboard down there and you can hear this squeaking sound and it's not too bad at the moment but it gets like really bad every now and then and you can see the centerboard moving from side to side which it's not really supposed to do This is a little bit disconcerting because sometimes the centerboard moves so much in the waves that um, you can see the whole centerboard box kind of, I would say, kind of flexing a little bit. So the whole box is flexing, and I don't know, it's just very kind of um, uncomfortable. And you can't hear it probably on the video but the noise that the squeaking sound and that noise is like loud enough that it's actually kind of hard to sleep here in the um, in this cabin where me and Sophie are sleeping right now and we are not really sure what actually is making the sound it might be the rubber strips that are going down the sides of the centerboard box and then the, you know, those are kind of like friction strips that are supposed to hold the centerboard in place. But it seems like the strips are too thin, and that's why the centerboard has too much space. And I don't really know how that happened because um, I don't see any wear on the strips, so it doesn't seem like the strips have worn down. So those are like the original ones. So it's a mystery to me as to why um, we, the, the 
the center board has so much room and why it's moving around so much when the strips don't seem worn down it seems like the strips were maybe too thin to begin with but yeah that's that probably gonna need to haul out again and, and take the drop the center board take the whole center board off and see what's going on and uh, that is annoying we were expecting some problems um, of course there's always going to be some problems but we were not really you know we were hoping that we wouldn't have to haul out pretty much immediately after launching I mean we've done 550 nautical miles but still I don't know it's kind of annoying the, the shaft seal that is leaking is another thing that we kind of need to fall out for to replace that or to fix that. We have a dripless lip seal that's not supposed to leak and the only reason that those really leak are if the shaft is worn down. But um, if the shaft is worn down then you can move the seal along the shaft and I've moved it to three different positions now and it's still leaking at all of those positions so it seems unlikely that the shaft is worn out in all of those positions so I don't know why it's leaking because we don't have any vibration the shaft doesn't vibrate the engine seems pretty much perfectly aligned which I'm pretty happy about because I did that myself but still the seal is leaking we don't really know why seems like almost the only option is to just replace the whole seal with a different type of seal I don't know that's kind of annoying as well because the seal was completely new entering the Columbia River from the sea can be a really rough ordeal this is where the huge outflow from the 1200 miles long river meets the swell coming in from the Pacific Ocean. The sandbar that you have to cross is relatively shallow and on a wrong day this combination can result in very scary seas. But with good timing and good weather we didn't really experience much trouble. Most of the work was dodging the dredgers that were outworking to keep the channel to its maintained depth. Perhaps we didn't make it to our initial target of Strait of Juan de Fuca, but after 550 nautical miles of sailing and our first ever bar crossing behind us, it was still time for a quick celebration. Drinking beer is nice and all, but sailing towards the town of Astoria and its boatyard, we were also thinking of the upcoming haul out, which I had already called in and scheduled for the next day. After the refit I had to take a bit of a breather before getting back to these videos. I was just so kind of exhausted a little bit but now I really had fun putting this one together and I hope you enjoyed the video as well. And now 
when I transitioned back to Arctic sailing videos I kind of know what's going to happen on YouTube because the boat refit and the boat rebuild videos they just attract a different kind of a crowd and a much larger viewership on YouTube than the actual sailing videos that's just how it is uh, you know boat buying boat refitting and all kinds of drama um, that's just uh, more you know that's just attracts more viewers than uh, sailing in the Arctic even sailing in the tropics as you've probably noticed attracts more viewers than sailing in the Arctic but that's normal because it's more relatable and um, that's just what most people want to see but YouTube it's a numbers game so I know that now when I transition back to Arctic sailing I know that I'm going to have to work uh, even harder to keep the numbers up but if you watch this video and especially if you watched it till the end then uh, you are maybe in it for the long run, long run and maybe you, you enjoy the actual sailing footage as well so if you do and if you like to support the making of these videos you know the best way to do so would be on Patreon and the Patreon page you know, I'll link it here and then down in the description so feel free to check it out but you know if it's something that you can't financially do you know then the best way to the other best way to support the creation of these videos is just by watching them on YouTube and that's pretty easy and that's free and it will always remain free and now spoiler alert this footage here is a couple of months old as you've probably noticed it was from uh, October end of October and it's now December end of December as I'm publishing it just because I haven't been working on the videos or ha haven't been able to work on the videos so dil diligently lately I'm kind of running behind but it's always going to be my co goal to be as close to real time as possible so right now we did actually make it further up north eventually and I have some really superb footage from um, the first snowfalls here and so on and I can't wait to put that together so I hope you keep watching and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.